Well, hello, we're back in our GR86. And I know we've covered this car a lot, but there's a big milestone happening right now, and that is it's the end of January 2023, and that's a year since we bought this car. This has been a road trip car. It has traveled from Utah all the way to Pennsylvania and back again as a chase car and a camera car. We have put miles on this thing. We've drag raced it. We've shared it on some of our adventures with fans of the show. Right now we have 13,000 and almost 500 miles on this car. That's in one year, doing road trips, comparisons, track days. We've done so many things with it, compared it to so many things, you've probably seen many of them. The dynamics that I felt early on driving this at the press launch, I still am in love with the dynamics. They're still so much fun. And this car is still the one I want to be in. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts. This is Everyday Driver. We did get this car for MSRP. There were no special favors. We just went to a dealer that only sold cars at MSRP. We got out the door with this car at $34,000. They are still kind of hard to find, and we hope if you've had the interest in buying one, you've been able to buy one. Because we've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed putting it against all kinds of things. And they're fun in winter. You would think that it's not. And whenever you see a sports car in winter, which can be rare, you just think, hey, they're not allowed to do that. I guess they are, and they're clearly having more fun than I am. I feel like nobody will let me in just because I'm in a fun little sports car and I'm driving it in the winter, and therefore I don't deserve to be here for some reason. And in the winter, this is where I wanna be. Yes, this is a rear-wheel drive car we are driving in the winter. We're having an epic snow year in Park City, even though the roads are kind of clear today. We've had so much snow this year that the snow plows have been working twice as hard as normal, and they've been desperate to keep everything clear, which is nice. But when you have a rear-wheel drive car and snow, you kind of like the parking lots to not be clear. That's really what happens. You really want them to be covered in snow so you can be stupid. That's what it's for. It's inconsistent here, unfortunately, today, so I can't do what I want, which is just be absurd. <laughs> yeah. Sports car ownership in the winter. This is highly recommended. In fact, driving it in the winter has reminded me again how much I love it. That may seem weird because it's a rear wheel drive car in the snow, but we've got full winter tires on here. That gives it great grip. And this car, it, it's a car you don't have to be precious with at all. You don't have to think about and wonder if it can take whatever you want to throw at it. And so that makes it even more fun in the winter because this is a car that's already fun driving slow. Ooh. <laughs> You want to drive with traction control off in the winter. I feel like you have more control than anybody else because the car is so light, you can feel what's going on with the road. Just tiptoe, you put the feelers out, and you can kind of feel what's under the car. See, look at this, just ahead of me. SUV, 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 creeping along. I'm looking for my apex, and it's snowing, and there's black ice. This 86 just feels robust and light on its feet and easy to drive. It's a car you don't have to drive at the absolute upper limits for it to be enjoyable. And because of that, you can get the back out when you want. You can have it stick when you want. Winter tires are required. It's strange because the lightweight nature of this car and how it turns in, that feel, that driving feel, I understand what's going on, on with my tires. Whereas in an SUV, you cannot understand. And so you have to slow down and tiptoe. That is probably the best part about driving a sports car is that everything you know about your line and your dynamics and fun driving still applies in winter. <laughs> there is a lot of satisfaction in driving it like this. Not in all conditions. You don't want to be stupid about it. But there's still, you can feel the surface. I enjoyed this car all through the summer. All of the comparisons I did were some of the most fun driving comparisons we've ever done. We had so much fun with this car in any kind of situation we threw at it. The thing that was interesting is to think about how much more fun it seemed to get when the weather got nasty. I was just excited to be in this car and to not think twice about it and just take it out and drive it in the snow. Don't get me wrong, SUVs have their place and all wheel drive and four wheel drive make it bomb proof. I agree, but a day like this, this is still worthy of just going driving. 
When I'm in real winter conditions, I just appreciate the fact that this car's light. Because getting going is one thing, but stopping and controlling the behemoth that is your vehicle in bad weather, that's actually more important. And this car is just easy to control and it doesn't weigh that much. In fact, it's one of the lighter cars actually on the road right now. And you feel that when you battle weather. I have not driven my Cayman in the winter. I have not put winter tires on it. I admit that. However, I have driven my 928 in some of the worst winter conditions. As a matter of fact, Todd and I had both of our vintage cars in some of the worst winter conditions we've ever driven in. We set out on our second Cars of the Past trip and it was nasty. You should have seen the looks that we got. A lot of that is because of the salt and the salt mixture that Salt Lake City and the surrounding area puts on their roads. But owning this car has really freed me up to not be bothered by that and really embrace puddles and ice and driving it through snow and just winter. I've been a little bit surprised because you can see a little bit of the wear and tear on the muffler. You can just see that underneath the bumper a little more than I expected in a year. It's not like this car has been purposely driven through lots and lots of salt, but this area just gets that when they clear the roads. Now I admit there's hills, there's terrain that all wheel drive and four wheel drive will definitely be able to overcome that this car won't. But for the most part, this is a Four Seasons car. I never think twice about driving this car in the snow. Honestly, I just think, okay, it's a snowy day. I should take the 86. It never dawns on me as a problem. If you have major ice storms in your area, we really don't get those. You might want to think twice, but with winter tires, it's been great. Anytime I've wanted to drive it. It comes down to a personal choice but I do highly recommend driving your sports car in the winter. This is it's just enjoyable all the time. After a year of use, this car has held up really well. All the materials still feel and look very new. Now at 13,000 miles, nothing should be worn, but what's nice is there hasn't been any surprises where, well, that's got a terrible rattle, or why is this wearing so quickly? It just feels like a car with a little bit of life in it. Up to this point, we've experienced zero RTV issues, Yes, of course, that RTV issue is lingering. People are very worried about the excess RTV getting the oil pickup too. But in spite of the fact that that is a known issue and does happen, we have not dropped the oil pan on this car. We haven't changed anything about how we're driving it. And the actual numbers so far from tuners and shops that are actually digging in on the issue, the chances of it actually wrecking your engine are so far very, very small. And if we do, we'll have it repaired or we'll have the engine replaced. The car's still under warranty. And at this point, 13,482 miles, it's been doing great. If you find yourself avoiding this car because you've heard about an RTV issue, you're just holding yourself back. You're just denying yourself a great driving car. But no squeaks and rattles. I mean, it's still practically a brand new car. We've been driving the car pretty hard. We've also let a lot of other people drive it too, and the clutch engagement has definitely changed since new, and that's okay. But this is one of the better six-speed manual transmissions being offered at any price point. It's way up there. The steering is nice. The balance is excellent. The best part about this car, yes, it's the increased power, the clutch engagement, the shifter, but really, it is the lightweight feeling that dominates your driving. That light sense, that delicate touch everywhere you drive, even in winter. It's something to look forward to every time you get in this car. You're not gonna wow anybody with the acceleration in this car. But with this new engine and the extra power that it has from the first gen, it's just satisfying. It feels like enough. By the way, the power stop brakes. The race pads are still on here. We haven't taken them off. Z36 rotors with the race pads and they still don't squeak. And they've been excellent and we're gonna leave them on the car. Gas mileage isn't amazing, but we've averaged 26 miles to the gallon for an entire calendar year with different tires on, with all kinds of driving from road trips to track days. I'll admit that that's not great, but 26 miles to the gallon for a all day, every day sports car? Most sports cars struggle to give you that, the Miata being one of the only exceptions. The heated seats are great. I have wished for a heated wheel more than once. And I'm still right about us buying this car. This is still the right choice for us to do all four seasons on. What I love is the seating position. It still resonates with me. I like the shifter engagement. I like the steering input. I like the ride height. I like the instrument panel. This is the low compromise no stress sports car and I can't overstate how much I just never think about should I take the 86 I just do 
Now that doesn't mean that everything in here is perfect. There are some downsides that we've discovered over time. There's little things that happen with any car that aren't perfect. The Apple CarPlay Android Auto works great, but it is plug-in only. A lot of people prefer wireless. I actually don't mind the plug-in kind, but every now and then it just doesn't wake up properly. Not often, but occasionally. Generally that's fixable by just getting a new cable, but it does occur. The ride over time has been very interesting. When we first drove this car at the press launch, we thought it rode pretty well and was actually set up really well for both street and track. And when we had it in our area in the summertime, I would continue to agree with that. Now, it is a little bit buzzy on the highway if you do a long distance road trip, but generally it just feels sports car stiff and fine. Until you get to winter, and once the temperatures really drop, these shocks start to just feel too stiff, and there's just a lot more crash in any of the bumps that you hit. You add that to the imprecise nature of winter tires, and the ride in the winter is significantly worse than it is in the summer. Now, I would still buy it. I have still loved it. I still drive it all winter and just kind of laugh because I can't believe how much fun it is. The gas cap is actually one of those pop-in, pop-out little gas covers, and uh, it can freeze over. Ask me how I know. If it does, you're out there with your key trying to dig your way through the ice to get the piece to pop out. How often will that happen? It does occur. Oh, and this turn signal over here. We don't need to reinvent anything. I would want to take a sawzall and hack that thing off. Every time I think it's going to shut off, I have to go the other way, and then it's, it's just screwed up stupid turn signal. I had one extremely cold morning like down in the negatives where the car had been parked outside and the blinkers did that extra fast blink like the electricity wasn't making all the way and then when the car warmed up that went away. That happened once. Now this isn't the right choice for everyone. We turned off the engine sound speaker but it's still fairly loud in here. There is no sunroof. There's no convertible offered. It is kind of a little dark cabin but I don't mind that. The seats don't fit everybody well. The back seats are only good if your kids are under about eight. It has a surprising amount of rear trunk space, especially if you drop the actual back seat. But then, of course, you only have a two-seat car. You have a two-seat car with cargo space. That's an upside, but you didn't actually gain any more than two seats. Well, is it a V8? No. Is it turbocharged? Nope. Is it all-wheel drive? No. Is it European? Also, no it is not. Well then how could it possibly be any fun? You have to come drive it. I will miss this car. I'm gonna miss the engagement. It's so satisfying to drive. You're going to overshift. You're gonna shift when it's not necessary just to feel the engagement. It just seems like an old friend now. I'm gonna miss it. This car is going to go away to a friend of the show, so it's still going to be local. We'll put it in some other reviews, so this car isn't going away completely from our lives, but it is going to be around far less. And I'm pretty bummed about that, actually. I'm, I'm sad to see it go. And the problem is, I'm going to compare in the back of my mind the dynamics of this to every future sports car. I love Porsches and I love Caymans, but this is undeniable. Whether we mention it or not, this is always going to be at the back of our minds, is it as good as a GR86? Should you just go get one anyway? I feel like most people that love to drive say they'd like to have a sports car, but they can't because of a big list of reasons. This is the rare sports car that knocks away most of those reasons. And that's just it. When it comes to driving all year round, I want you to own a car that you will love driving all the time in any weather conditions, and you won't be afraid that you'll equip it properly you won't be afraid. I'm gonna miss this car more than, more than most cars that have left my life, but it'll be back. I also have grown to really love these wheels. I know it's controversial, but most people when they see it in person really love them. We've bought other cars for the show for purposes of driving for the show to spend time with them. This has been the best car that we bought. I feel vindicated. This has been an excellent use of our money. I kind of wish it would stick around. <laughs>